Hey everybody on YouTube. Today I thought I'd take another moment to do another q and I've been getting a lot of people writing me about obsolete videotape machines and uh, basically about the video heads themselves. They want to know what proper steps to take and I do have some videos posted talking about how to rebuild heads that gets in a little bit of detail. But here's the quick fix for the weekend warrior trying to learn how to use a video machine or trying to recover video and and the knowledge you need to know about keeping video heads clean to make them last longer and actually the cleaner the video head the better the actual playback of a vintage videotape is going to look a lot of times a uh, video on a vintage video head will look very grainy if the video head is starting to pick up debris so what you want to do is you want to make sure the video head is clean there's a lot of uh, specifications online you can you can clean them uh using either a special cloth or special chamois but my personal view is if you know how to do it I like to use basically uh, it's a cloth material and cleaning them by the sides of the video head itself so basically if you have the knowledge of how to clean video heads you want to clean the side of the video heads itself and lightly spin it like in, in some material to pick up the debris okay you don't want to press hard you don't want to press up and down just slightly up against the side which you can use any type of uh, t-shirt uh, material works really good. And, you know, rubbing alcohol, I, I recommend, you know, a high percentage, 90, 95% alcohol. Keep away from as much water content as possible in rubbing alcohol. Okay, I have laid out basically some video heads. Here's an EIJ reel-to-reel -reel video bar, okay? This is used in EIJ and CV skip field machines and various other type of reel-to-reel uh, -reel video machines. It's you know relatively the same design. Panasonic makes these as well. You want to make sure that you clean the outer side real carefully with uh, material or like a um, cloth material, like a t-shirt material. Get that really clean. But if you have an air compressor, you want to blow out the gap, which is between, you know, you got a little hole, which is the gap between the copper winding. You want to blow those out if you have an air compressor to get the gap clean. Blow those gaps out. That applies to the ones with the drums like this. You want to blow the gap out with like an air compressor and a little rubber uh, hole, a very fine hole which shoots air through it so you can get the gap clean. You want to blow out the gap with an air compressor or even spray cans with those little um, plastic wines, uh, wands on the end of them. Those work pretty good too. You want to blow out the gap. You want to slightly clean the gap or clean the outer edge of the actual head with like a t-shirt material and rubbing alcohol. Uh, very high alcohol content. Stay away from water as much as possible. You want to get the highest alcohol content you can to clean it because it will dry real quick. That applies to like here for instance. If you'll look, this is a high 8 video drum for like a high 8 camcorder. These are Betacam SP heads. Okay, and this is an EIJ reel-to-reel -reel video head. All video heads are the same. They got gaps. You got to clean them. You got to blow out the gaps with like an air compressor or a, uh, a spray air in a can. Get the gaps clean, but you want to clean the outside with a, you know, like a t-shirt material and get the debris off of the outside of the head itself. And that will actually get your video to play clean and won't be as grainy when the heads start getting dirty when you're trying to do vintage tape transfers. Very imperative that you do this. Uh, if you want to really get some clean, noise-free video, you want to clean your video heads between every tape transfer. Every time you run a tape, you want to clean the heads. Every time. Do not do a cleaning on your video machine, your video heads every 10 tapes or 20 tapes. It's not advised because that's a lot of buildup. You want to get the heads clean probably about every videotape pass. After, every one, after you run every tape, clean the video heads gap and outer of the gap. You know, you got to really get these heads clean. Okay, I'm going to walk over here. Somebody was asking me about video head demagnetizers. And what do they do? Okay, video head demagnetizers, what they do is they, after a period of time, your video heads will actually turn on you and become magnetic. And when that happens, you're at risk of shorting out the video head. The video may not play back very clean. Uh, it might get all... Um, how you say it, staticky and all kinds of various things because the actual head is starting to get magnetic. So basically what a demagnetizer does is it creates a magnetic field to actually wipe out the magnetic field buildup of the video coil and head itself. So 
you want to pick up a demagnetizer if you're dealing with vintage video decks and vintage video recovery you want to pick up a video head demagnetizer and I'm gonna show you this one this one is the absolute top of the line best de uh, video head demagnetizer you can buy you use them on quad two inch machines you use them on one inch machines you use them on anything broadcast and consumer this is a really really high demagnetizer okay as you can see this demagnetizer has a plastic uh, uh, cover on it and it's, it's got a little lip that actually points to the very end. You want to take this on all your heads, you want to turn it on and get very close to your heads and pull out and do this a couple times after your video heads are clean and pull out and pull out. Okay, that's going to, you're going to see, you can feel the force that it's actually demagnetizing your video head. You get as close as you can, have it on and pull out. Okay, that's what a demagnetizer does. It actually demagnetizes your video heads. And if you're looking for this particular one, it's a handy mag. You can find them on eBay. They're pretty expensive, between $50 and $60. But this is the one I use on all my vintage video equipment. I've had this thing for quite a long time. So if, you, if you're looking for a, uh, a video demagnetizer, go on eBay. This is really a good one. Do not buy a cheap one. You want one that does a really good job. But anyways, that's a video head demagnetizer. And you can use those on 2-inch, 1-inch, 3-quarter machines, reel-to-reel, -reel, uh, camcorders, you name it. Uh, Betacam SPs, it's for, it's for demagnetizing any video, head that, you know, any video head that you might have in any video machine. It does a wonderful, wonderful job. And then, of course, like I said, these, these video heads are spares for my repairs and stuff, but you will be actually cleaning the video heads inside the machine. Be careful not to break anything. Be very careful when you're cleaning the heads uh, and use good materials. Uh, use good rubbing alcohol, 90, about 90% if you can find it. Uh, stay away from the water-soluble alcohols. Uh, do not use Q-tips. Warning, do not use Q-tips. Do not press hard on the video heads. Be very, very careful. You want to clean the heads really good. You want to blow out the gaps with an air compressor or a spray can of, uh, of air to get the uh, gap clean, get the gap uh, free of residue. All right? But that's basically how you clean video heads on all video equipment. If you follow these instructions, your heads will be real clean between each tape, and you'll have a really clean transfer. And that does not apply to the video brushes. I have videos posted on video brushes. You do need to replace the brushes if they're bad because you'll get a lot of video noise in the picture. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video.